Well, good evening, young adults. I'm Pastor Samuel, and I'm honoured to be given the opportunity once again to share God's Word with you guys. And uh, as an invited guest speaker, if you get invited back to preach again, it must mean that you're doing something right. Lah, oh. All right so I want to thank uh, Pastor Joey and the team for allowing me the privilege to be here with you guys again. So let's pray before we dive into the Word, shall we? Father God, today we want to acknowledge that your word is the ultimate authority, Lord. And so God, is, even as we just take the time to sit at your feet and learn from you, we just ask and pray, Lord, that your word will go forth, it will touch our hearts, it will convict us, and it will change our lives. And so God, we say that we are open to your word today. We are open to what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us today. Come and be here with us and speak to us in a real and personal way. We invite you here. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor and remind them God's word is going to bless you. Well, so today we are continuing on our sermon series. This is the second message in our installment about faith at work. And today I'll be preaching about submitting to workplace authority. And I think that this message today is going to be important because unless you happen to be the big boss, you are going to be under some form of authority at work. So how does God want us to relate to them at work? How does He desire us to treat them, especially when they are difficult bosses to work under? That is what we will be looking into today. And so with that, the big idea for my message today is that God wants us to respect and submit to the authorities that He has established. And so let's unpack this together. So first of all, we must respect the authorities that God has established. Now, some of you may be looking at this and thinking, well, that's fine. God is a good God, right? So He only establishes good authorities, right? So, Pastor, my bad boss is exempted then. He cannot have been established by God. Well, if that is you, then uh, I've got news for you, lah, right? Because it says in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And so you see, the Bible is very clear. All authorities, good or bad, have been established by God. And so even if your boss is not a very nice boss, his authority has still been established by God. In fact, understanding the context of which Paul wrote this passage will give us a greater appreciation to the depth of Paul's words here. You know, many scholars believe that the book of Romans was written in AD 57 during the reign of the, emperor, the Roman Emperor Nero. And as far as bad authorities go, this guy was up there. Let me explain. So in the Roman Empire, they had this philosophy called the Pax Romana which was basically to maintain order and peace throughout the whole empire by any means necessary. But during Emperor Nero's reign, out came a new religious group calling themselves Christians and claiming that there is another king named Jesus. And so Emperor Nero naturally saw them as a threat not only to the Pax Romana, but also to his own reign as emperor. So how did he resolve this? He didn't have peaceful negotiations with them. He was a violent man, so his way of resolving this perceived threat was to try and completely eliminate Christians. It is well documented that he was brutal in his persecution of believers. He would torture and even murder them if they refused to renounce their faith. In fact, many people believe that the Apostles Peter and Paul were both executed under his reign. So if ever there was a bad authority that Christians should be exempted from respecting, it should be this guy, right? But yet it was in the midst of Emperor Nero's reign that Paul wrote that all authority, 
including Nero's, was established by God. Doesn't that give us a different perspective to Paul's words? Now, I know that some of us may be struggling with this. How can a good God establish not so good authorities? Well, truth be told, we may never fully understand. But we have to accept that sometimes God allows things to happen for a greater purpose. For example, the persecution of believers caused them to flee to various places, which propelled the spread of the gospel around the world. So sometimes God permits not so good people into positions of authority for His greater and divine purpose that we may never fully understand. And this includes your difficult bosses. Why did God put you under them? We may never know. But we have to trust that God still has a good purpose. Perhaps God wants you to be shaped in some way. Perhaps God wants you to learn to love difficult and unlovable people. Perhaps God wants you to stand out as a testimony in your workplace through how you honour and respect them when everyone else is not doing so. You see, whatever it is, we may never fully know, but we must still trust God's purpose and will and that it is still good. But some of us may be wondering, just because God established them, does it mean that I have to respect them? Well, let's see what Paul says about this. Paul continues on in Romans chapter 13, verse 6 to 7. He says, This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. And so Paul is very clear here. We must show authorities proper respect and honour because they are established by God. In fact, he says here that we owe it to them. And don't forget, huh, Paul was writing this about Emperor Nero. He was telling believers that even though he was a bad emperor, they still owed him respect and honour. So God wants us to respect all authorities He established, including the bad ones. So what does it mean to respect the authorities at our workplaces? Well, it doesn't mean that we have to be their best friend. Neither does it mean that we have to wayang to them, right? But it means that we should behave properly towards them. It means that we shouldn't gossip, we shouldn't backstep, complain or treat them poorly in any way. It means that we treat a bad boss the same way that we would treat a good boss. Now some people may say, respect is earned and not given. Have you ever heard of that before? But is that really true? Is respect really earned and not given? You know, I don't think so, right? As a guest speaker, you know, most of you are strangers to me and I to you. So I've never done anything to earn your respect, right? But if I were to say hi to you later after service, will you treat me with respect? I hope so, lah, right? <laughs> but my point is this, we can respect people even though they haven't earned it. Yes, respect can be lost, but it doesn't mean that we need to be disrespectful. We can still show our respect without it being deserved. And God wants us to do that to all authorities, including the bad ones in our workplaces. You see, because many people don't understand this, they assume that it is okay to rebel against authority. But is it really? Let's see what the Bible says, right? Paul also writes in Romans chapter 13, verse 2, Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. In other words, to rebel against earthly authority is to rebel against God's authority. We're telling God that we don't agree with His decision to put that authority in place and we are going to go against His will. 
And the Bible gives us many examples of this. When, for example, when Miriam and Aaron spoke up against Moses, even though it was behind his back in Numbers chapter 12, God called them out and punished them. When the Israelites rejected the prophet Samuel's leadership in 1 Samuel chapter 8, God told Samuel, it is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. So you see, when we rebel against earthly authorities, we are rebelling against God's will as well. But the Bible also gives us examples of people responding well to bad leadership. For example, David had two opportunities to kill King Saul. But both times, he said, I will not touch or lay a hand on the Lord's anointed one. Even though King Saul was out to get his life. Jesus could have spoken up when he was being interrogated by the Roman authorities. But he remained silent, even though it meant his crucifixion. So friends, being under a bad leader doesn't mean that we have to respond badly. It is possible to still respect them properly. In fact, Paul says in Romans chapter 13 verse 5 that it is not only possible but necessary. He writes, therefore it is necessary, everyone say necessary, it is necessary to submit to the authorities not only because of possible punishment but also as a matter of conscience. In other words, Paul is saying that we need to submit to and respect the authorities at our workplaces not just to avoid getting fired but also to maintain our consciences before God. Because when we rebel against authority at work, we are also rebelling against God's authority and it will affect our conscience. On top of that, our colleagues are also watching how we're treating our bosses. And then after that, they know we come to church on the weekends. What testimony does that send out to them? Aren't we supposed to live as Christ's ambassadors, representing Him well in our workplaces? Won't our consciences then be affected before God if we don't represent Him well at our work? Friends, God wants us to respect our workplace authorities. And I know that it's easier said than done, especially if your boss is not the easiest person to respect. In fact, some of us may be thinking, I know that it is the right thing to do, but I'm struggling with my difficult boss. How do I start? What should I do? Well, Paul tells us what to do in 1 Timothy chapter 2, which was also written under Emperor Nero's reign. He, write, he, he says, Therefore, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So Paul is saying that we should pray for the authorities that we are under. When's the last time you prayed for your boss? All right, Paul is saying here that we should pray for them. This includes our workplace authorities. God wants us to pray for them even if they are difficult bosses to work under. The Bible has been consistent about this. We have to pray for those who mistreat us, bless those who curse us, and do good to those who hate us. This includes our difficult bosses as well. So friends, pray for them. You have a power and authority higher than theirs that is on your side. You have God. So pray for them. Ask God to improve your working relationship with your bosses. Ask Him to bless you with favour from them. You can even ask Him to change their attitudes and the way that they are treating others. The work of the heart is all a work that only God can do. And don't forget to pray for yourself. Pray that your own attitude towards them will change. Pray that you will be able to love them even when they are being difficult towards you. 
pray for God's wisdom and grace to know how to interact with them properly. And pray for God to help you stand out as a living testimony for Him in the workplace through how you respect your difficult bosses. Friends, we should pray for our workplace authorities and pray for ourselves too. That way, as Paul says, we can live peaceful and quiet lives, being godly and holy in our workplaces. Amen? So first, we must respect the authorities that God established. And second, we must submit to the authorities that we come under. So if the authorities are established by God, then that means that we should not only respect them, but we need to submit to them as well. 1 Peter chapter 2 writes, Slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also those who are harsh. And so Peter was telling the slaves that they should submit to their employers who have authority over them. In fact, he emphasized that they were not to just submit to good employers, but also to bad ones as well. And he says that we are to do so in reverent fear of God. In other words, submission to our workplace authorities is an act of honoring God. Now, some of us may be wondering, what if I disagree with them or I can't get along with them? Do I still have to submit? Write this down. To submit is to follow regardless of whether you agree or not. That is the very definition of the word submit. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as to allow another person or group to have power or authority over you or to accept something unwillingly. So true submission is not to only follow when you agree. It is to follow even if you disagree. It means that you give up your right to be right. But is it wrong to disagree? Well, no, it's not. The verse is not saying that we cannot have an opinion. But the verse is telling us to submit in spite of our opinions. It means that we can disagree, but we cannot be disagreeable people. It means that we don't quiet quit just because we don't see eye to eye with our bosses. It means that we give our best in our workplaces regardless of whether our boss is good or not. That is true submission. The only exception to this is if they ask you to sin. Then you can and you should refuse. For example, right, if they ask you to make underhanded deals or conduct shady business practices, then definitely you should not follow them. God is always the highest authority and we must obey Him above all if they are asking us to do anything that contradicts His word. But if our struggles with our workplace authorities are about their leadership styles, their personality issues, their decision-making processes, or them just being boomers in general, then as long as it doesn't clash with the Bible, we still have to submit to them. Some of us may be struggling with this though, and I understand. How can we follow when we don't agree? It's definitely not easy, right? So why should we follow difficult bosses? Why should we make ourselves suffer by submitting to them? For one simple reason, it is the right thing to do. Earlier we read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18, where Peter instructs slaves to submit to both good and bad masters. And then he then continues instructing them in verses 19 to 21, saying, For it is commendable if someone bears up the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and endure it, that is commendable before God. To this you were called. 
Because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His steps. In other words, if we are suffering under bad bosses, yet are still able to submit to them, then it is to our credit and commendable before God. Anyone can submit to a good boss. That's the easy thing. But it takes someone of godly character to submit to a difficult boss. It may not be the easy thing to do, but it is the right thing to do. In fact, Peter says here in verse 21 that Jesus did the same. He willingly suffered for us during his time on earth to set an example. And in spite of his suffering, he always did what was right. So his point is this. You are Christ-like when you willingly suffer to do the right thing. It's what Jesus did. When we read the Gospels, we can see that Jesus suffered under the hands of the authorities. He was persecuted, framed, mocked, spat on, and ultimately crucified. But he willingly endured all of it because he knew that it was the right thing to do so that all of us can be saved. And that's why we are Christ-like when we willingly suffer to do the right thing. Jesus has set for us the example to follow. So even if our workplace authorities treat us poorly, it doesn't mean that we have to respond poorly. It is possible to do the right thing in spite of the wrongs that are done to us. So how can we learn to submit to difficult authorities at work? Well, for some of us, we may know it's the right thing to do in our heads, but let's be honest, our hearts are struggling with it, right? So how can we submit to difficult authorities with willing and sincere hearts? Well, Colossians chapter 3 tells us how. It says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to carry their favor. In other words, don't wayang, right? But do it with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. In other words, Paul is saying here that we can do our work with sincere hearts if we work as if we are working for Jesus. That is the best motivation for us. Our motivation shouldn't just do, avoid getting fired. That is just living in fear. Our motivation also shouldn't be the promotions or the better pay. It's nice, but it won't sustain you. Just the other day, I heard that a friend of a friend had quit her job as a lawyer because she felt that her five-figure salary couldn't justify the torture that she was going through at work. Friends, none of these are good motivators for us to submit to bad bosses. The only good motivator is to see Jesus as our boss instead. To do our work as if we were working for Him. And verse 24 here says that if we do so in our workplace, we'll get something better than an earthly pay. We'll get eternal heavenly rewards. You know, I share this passage often with the Filipino congregation in my home church. They're all domestic workers, and some of them are unfortunately under bad employers who are demanding or nasty towards them. So we tell them the same thing. Do your work as if you were working for the Lord. So I always tell them this, when you mop the floor at home, right, for your employer, think of it as you're mopping God's floor. When you wipe the window for your employer, right, think of it as you're wiping God's window. And we tell them, if you do that, your attitude will change. The way you do your work, will change. You see, my point is this. The attitude you carry to work will determine how you carry out your work. Isn't this true? 
Haven't we seen people do bad work because of their bad attitudes? It's definitely easy to develop a bad attitude towards a bad boss, right? And God knows that it's difficult too. Fair enough. And so that's why God tells us, make me your boss instead. Do your work for me. And when we do our work for God, the attitudes that we carry to work will be different. And so will the way we do our work be. We will treat work as sacred. We will do it with all diligence. And we will cooperate with our bosses, even the difficult ones. This is how we submit to earthly authorities. By doing so as if we were submitting to God's authority. The attitudes we carry to work will determine how we carry out our work. So we have to work as if we are working for the Lord. Amen? So can I invite the musicians on stage? And let me close with my own personal journey about learning to respect and submit to workplace authorities. Now, some of you may be thinking, right? Pastor, you work in church, ma. Your boss is also a pastor, right? So of course you don't have problem respecting and submitting to your workplace authority, la. Pastor Joey, you agree or not? <laughs> Putting him in a tough spot now, but it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> but I have a rather unique situation. Let me introduce you to my senior pastor, Pastor Billy, pictured left in this photo. He is my pastor, he is my boss, and he's also my father. Yes, I'm a senior pastor's kid working under his dad. Yikes, right? <laughs> now, my dad's a good pastor and he's an amazing leader. But we have very typical and very real father-son issues because we're both still human with very real human flaws. And so, I think I can be honest with you guys and open with you guys, right? Growing up, my dad and I, we didn't have the best of relationships. We both can be a little bit hot-tempered, which has led to many arguments, resulting in years of hurts and unresolved emotional baggage. On top of that, my dad is from the boomer generation, whose leadership philosophy is usually my way or the highway. If you work under a boomer, you may know what I mean, right? So as a millennial, I struggled to accept his style of leadership, which led to even more arguments in the office, sometimes in front, even in front of the other staff. And so when God called me to work as a pastor in my church, I really struggled. Right, a lot of you know, right, that working under you, with a, not, not even under your parents, just working with a family member is difficult, right? So I really struggled. And I struggled to submit to my dad's authority. I knew that God had called me to this role. But I hated that it meant that I was under his leadership. I'll be honest with you, I wanted to quit so many times just to escape it. You know what I even did? Sometimes I would even go on Job Street and just scroll a little bit just to fantasize about working anywhere else away from my dad. I asked God, why did you call me to work under him? I struggled to understand it, much less accept it. It was tough. I really struggled because of our, that history that we had, that fractured relationship. And on top of that, both of us are guys, my right? Guys, we go talk about feelings. So we never talked about all those things. And so it just carried on and carried on. And we just keep butting heads time and time again. It was tough. It was tough, I tell you. I wanted to quit so many times because of it. But one day, God spoke to me after another argument with him. And God asked me, Samuel, who is he to you at work? I thought, what a strange question, right? God, you don't know me. <laughs> so I answered, God, yeah, well, he's my boss and he's my senior pastor. And right then, a moment of revelation hit me. He's my boss. He's my senior pastor. 
and he's there because God put him there. And immediately, I felt God speak again. Samuel, right now in the role where you're at, your job is to respect and submit to him as your boss and your senior pastor. Even if you're right in your opinions, you're in the wrong the moment you disrespect him. Wow. And I immediately repented. I told God, God, forgive me. Because I realized I had allowed my pride to control and dictate how I related to my workplace authority. And since then, I've learned and I'm still learning what I've shared today. You know, everything I've shared today are things that I've had to learn myself the hard way. My senior pastor, my boss is established by God. And so, although he may not be the easiest guy to work under, I still have to learn to respect his authority out of respect for God. He is my workplace authority. And so I have to submit to him even when I don't agree. And even if his leadership style rubs me the wrong way, I still have to be Christ-like by doing the right thing and maintaining the right attitude. Do I still struggle? Yes, of course I do. Obeying God is not always easier. But at least I know, I know for now, that I'm doing what's right in God's sight. And that's what's most important to me. More important than being right. More important than winning the argument. Most important to me is I stand before God at my workplace and I'm able to tell Him, I want to do and I am doing what is right before you. And let me testify that as a result, God has blessed our working relationship. You know, these days we argue a lot less. In fact, we haven't argued in quite a while. And we communicate and work better together now. If you ask me a couple of years ago, would that be possible? I would have told you, impossible. <laughs> but God made it possible the moment I started obeying Him by respecting and submitting to my workplace authority. Only by obeying God's instructions and doing things God's way can you receive God's blessings. Amen? So as I wrap up my sermon, I want to encourage some of us here today. I may not know what you're going through at work, but God knows and God cares. He sees your struggles at work, especially under your difficult bosses. Yes, God wants us to respect and submit to our workplace authorities but He also wants to help us to do so. So today, I want to invite us to respond to God as we close. So if every eye closed and every head bowed, the first group of people I want to invite to respond to God today are those who desire to do what is right in God's sight at work. Maybe through today's sermon, you've realised that you haven't been respecting or submitting to your workplace authorities as you should. And you know that it's not easy. But today you are asking God, help me to do what is right in your sight. If that is you, then with every eye closed and with every head bowed here, I want to invite you to raise your hands as a response to God. I see your hands over here, behind on the right side. Thank you, thank you. I see your hand there. Thank you. Just a while more, just raise your hand. If you're suffering under a difficult boss, but you're telling God today, God, I want to do right by you. Anyone else? I see that hand back there. Thank you. Amen. The second group of people I want to invite to respond to God today are those who want to start praying for their difficult bosses. You may be struggling at work under their leadership. But through today's sermon, you understand that you should pray. To pray for them and to pray for yourself and to seek God's guidance and help. It may not be easy 
especially because of how they've been treating you. But you want to commit it to God in prayer anyway. If that is you, then I also want to invite you to raise your hands as a response to God. Today, right now, you're saying, God, Lord, I want to pray for my situation at work. I see your hands over this side. Thank you, thank you. I see your hand at the back. Thank you, thank you for that. So one more, just raise your hand. If you say, God, I want to commit from this day onwards to pray, to pray for the struggles that I'm going through at work with my bosses. Anyone else? Just raise your hand, anyone? Hallelujah. I see your hands. Thank you. So right now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hand the time to the worship team. And if you're able to, right, once we start singing, if you responded to God in any way today, and if you want to be prayed for, then I want to invite you, the moment we start singing, come out. Come out. Let us pray together with you. All right? So can I invite all of us to stand, and even as we just hand the time to the worship team to lead us in response to the word. And I need you to soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my life. The Lord is speaking to you. I'd like to just invite you to come to the altar submit yourselves to your bosses but most importantly to God to Christ so come let us now enter into this time of reflection of repentance and of worship unto Him I need you Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes and see that you're shaping my life. All I am, I surrender. Give me faith to trust what you say That you're good and your love is great I'm broken inside, I give you my life and I need you Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. Cause all I am, I surrender. Give me faith to trust what you say That you're good and your love is great I'm broken inside, I give you my life Give me faith, give me faith to trust what you say that your good and your love is great I'm broken inside, I give you my life Oh, give me faith to trust what you say that you're good, that your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my life. Oh, I give you my life. That may be weak, your spirit. 
strong in me my flesh may fail my god you never will i may be weak but your spirit is strong in me my flesh may fail and my god you never will i may i may be weak but your spirit is strong in me my flesh may fail My God, you never will Be faith Trust what you say That you're good Your love is faith I'm broken inside I give you my life 